All right, so today we are going to continue to uh, study the uh, book of Hebrews. Um, today we are going to um, uh, move forward to uh, chapter 1, verse 4 to 14. So the purpose of this book is to exhort and encourage Jewish Christians to be uh, diligent in their faith and to uh, not be lazy and fall back to uh, Judaism. Uh, we all know that the book of Hebrew was written before the temple was uh, destroyed. And the uh, audience of this book is the uh, is Jews, uh, which we all know from the title of this book, Hebrews. So this book is addressed to the uh, Jewish Christians. The Jews at that time, uh, actually those Jewish Christians at that time, um, they haven't faced the overwhelming persecution from the Roman Empire, but they are facing uh, a lot of persecution from their uh, peers, uh, Jews. All right, so some of them, uh, kind of uh, fell back, say, hey, if I go back to Judaism, uh, probably I wouldn't face that much persecution. All right, so, and uh, at that time, okay, also Jews uh, has begun to uh, exaggerate the Old Testament teaching of angels. Because uh, the Bible says the old, in the Old Testament that the uh, Testament law was ordained through angels, and it shows that they are very impressive and the important beings. So, um, there are some uh, kind of a worship of angels happened at a church in the uh, uh, in early uh, uh, in early church. For example, in the uh, Colossians two eighteen, uh, Paul mentioned that some people are uh, worshiping uh, angels. So, uh, and also, uh, you know, the purpose of this uh, um, book, okay, uh, because they want to uh, encourage those Jewish Christians and warn them, okay, not turning back. So the, uh, this book um, compared Jesus with a lot of uh, you know, teachings in the Old Testament or a lot of characters in the Old Testament. So um, in this book, we'll know that uh, the author of this uh, book compared Jesus with prophets. We just uh, learned from uh, verse 1 to 3. And uh, the, uh, he compares Jesus with angels. We are going to talk about this. He compared uh, Jesus with Moses, Joshua, and high priests. So in this book, um, better, this word, is used for um, 11 times. Four times the word superior is used, and seven times the word of greater is used. So in this book, we can see a lot of comparison. Okay? But uh, here we are going to uh, talk about the uh, uh, Jesus is superior to angels. So let's uh, stand up and uh, read the uh, verses. Uh, I'll read the verses. Having become uh, as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent in, and than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Or again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings the first, firstborn, in, firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, he makes the angels win, winds and his ministers a flame of fire. But of the sun, he says, your, th your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of uprightness is a scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And you, you, Lord, lay the foundation of the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will wear out like a garment. Like a robe, you will roll them up. Like a garment, they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will have no end. And to which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at my right hand, until I make your enemies a footstool of your feet. Are they not the ministering spirits sent out to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we uh, open your words, Lord, please open our hearts. Lord, teach us your truth and encourage us with your truth. 
Lord, we thank you. We pray in our Lord Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Please be seated. All right, so um, we uh, talk, you know, uh, in the Sunday schools, in the, uh, you know, uh, sermons, we talk about a lot about God and uh, Jesus Christ, of course. That's what we are really focused on. But, uh, you know, today we are going to uh, talk a little bit more about uh, angels. Right? So because uh, in these uh, verse 4 to 14, the author compares angels with Jesus. And Jesus is superior to angels, so I think it would be a kind of a uh, appropriate to uh, kind of a <coughs> know what 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 angels are. Okay, so these are some um, you know um, characters of the uh, angels. So um, we'll go through them. So first of all, God created angels. Okay, angels haven't always existed. According to the scripture, they are part of the uh, universe God created uh, in the beginning. Uh, because uh, for the um, if you uh, if we look at the Nehemiah, uh, it says, "You are the Lord. You alone. You have made heavens, the heavens of heavens, with all their host, and the host of heaven worship you." So those hosts of heaven are the angels. So the angels were created before us, but uh, they were created by uh, God. And uh, there are some angels; they are visible and uh, invisible. It, it really depends what they want to, uh, uh, what, what God wants them to be. So why these uh, uh, you know Bible verses tell God's created angels? Uh, the Bible also suggests that they do not uh, exist in the same way as we do. Okay, we have the human body, but the uh, angels they are spiritual beings, so they are s they don't have the human body, but they can appear to us as humans. And uh, uh, those angels are very powerful. Okay, so you know there are so many uh, information here, so I have to uh, write down and. Uh, um, so the angels are called mighty ones who do their work in Psalm 103, and uh, they are uh, they are the uh, they have the dominion they are dominions and authorities in Colossians chapter one. Uh, they are certainly greater and mightier than uh, than human, and uh, um, they uh, do all kinds of things which we will talk about later. But uh, you know, uh, on those old pen on those paintings, and uh, we uh, we see uh, a lot of uh, angels. Okay, they are like chubby, cute uh, boys with two uh, uh, wings, right? So, um, you know, when we, we would imagine that when we see those kind of uh, angels, we'll say, oh, how cute they are. Oh, what a cute baby. No, okay. So because angels, they are very powerful, the first thing we're going to do when we uh, see those angels is fearing, okay? Um, and there are a lot of, uh, you know, um, kind of... Uh, um, Chapters, okay, uh, tells us, okay, those chapters tell us when uh, those people meet angels, what they uh, do. I'll give you a couple of examples. It's in the um, book of Luke. Okay, so we'll know that um, uh, the John Baptism, Baptism, his father, his name is Zechariah, right? So when um, Zechariah see these angels, actually this angel, his name is Gabriel, right? So when he see the angel, what he did he do? He was afraid, okay? The, he was uh, startled and the uh, fear gripped him, okay? he, so he was afraid. And in chapter 2, we all always know that when those are shepherds, when they are, uh, you know, um, uh, in the desert, uh, in the uh, wilderness, and angel appeared to them and proclaimed the good news of uh, our Lord. And uh, what did they do? They fear, right? And the, um, the angels always say, fear not. Okay, so because those angels are very powerful beings, so they uh, actually are, they are not like those kind of uh, cute, choppy, choppy um, uh, babies. All right, so, and uh, it is not necessary that always angel has uh, wings. Okay, so... <laughs> And uh, because angels are created, so they are not to be worshipped. Okay, so we will, um, you know, uh, learn that later on. So worship of angels is one of the false doctrine being taught at the crossing. Uh, crossing. Uh, in the book of Revelation, an angel wants uh, John not to worship him. You must not do that. I'm a fellow servant with you and your 
brethren who hold the uh, testament of Jesus worship Lord. So we shouldn't pray to angel because uh, angel is not going to help us. God is able to answer prayer. And uh, Paul also warns us against the thinking of any of a mediator can come between us and God. Uh, Paul told us that for this is one God and there is one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus uh, Christ Jesus. So there is no angel can be the intermediate uh, between God and I. So if we were to pray to angel, it would be uh, give them a status equal to God. So it's a heretic. Oh, by the way, uh, you probably think that uh, you know, uh, in the old days they worship angel and uh, you know mix uh, um, Jesus Christ with angel. Do we have any kind of a religion nowadays that uh, have this kind of heresy? To uh, yes. Because the uh, Jehovah Witness, uh, they believe that uh, uh, Jesus Christ is an, was an angel before he incarnate, and uh, then after he uh, raised up, he became to the angel again and uh, sit in um, on the right side of the God. So, by the way, angel is not going to sit on the right side of the God. Okay, uh, and that an angel is Archangel Michael. So, uh, in the Jehovah Witness, they believe that Jesus Christ is is uh, uh, angel Michael, okay? So it is a ha uh, it is a heresy. So angels are not to be worshipped, and uh, there are three types of angel uh, in the uh, in the Bible. Uh, one is the uh, cherubim, right? So cherubim are mentioned in several places throughout the Scripture, and in the uh, Genesis, okay, after Adam and Eve sinned, and uh, uh, um, when God uh, expelled them from the uh, um, Garden of Eden, um, God set the cherubim to guard the entrance of the Garden of Eden. And in the, uh, in the other um, scriptures, um, we see uh, that uh, you know, cherubim uh, are the two golden figures, right? Sitting above the Ark, Ark of uh, Covenant. All right, so uh, if you uh, go to a third meal, you will see a model of the uh, Ark, of, uh, Ark of Covenant, and you kind of see two uh, cherubim sitting on the uh, Ark of the Covenant. And the second type of the um, angels, they are um, seraphim. Okay, those are the uh, angels who are only mentioned once in the Bible. They appeared in Isaiah chapter six to seven. Okay, so basically, when Isaiah was called, okay, by God to be the pro uh, prophet, uh, when he uh, saw God, he saw there are angels around. Those so those angels are seraphim. What they do, they they just uh, say, "Holy, holy." Holy is the Lord of hosts. So the whole earth is full of his glory. So those are seraphim, those are the angels who praise God. And uh, there are also some uh, kind of living creatures, um, um, but uh, they really, um, you know, the Bible did, uh, doesn't say uh, what, they, uh, um, what type of angel they are, but they uh, do all kinds of, um, you know, things. Uh, also, uh, angels, they have a uh, uh, hierarchy, okay? So angels in the Bible appear to have a rank or order, okay? The, uh, um, in the um, book of Jude 9, okay, they, he mentioned uh, angel Michael, who was called at, uh, as an archangel. So archangel is kind of the leader uh, of, the, uh, of the angel. And uh, um, we all, um, in, the, in Paris, there was a fountain called uh, with the uh, uh, archangel Michael. Um, that, that is a, a pretty uh, nice uh, script, uh, statue. And uh, Paul also uh, tells us that, you know, the Lord will return from heaven with the archangel's call. Okay, so uh, scripture didn't really tell us if this refers to the Michael or if they're the other archangels, but uh, there are um, archangels in the, uh, in the Bible. And the angels, they have, uh, some angels, they have their names. Actually, uh, not many. Only two angels have names. One is, uh, we also uh, talked about this, so one is uh, uh, Archangel Michael, right? So, um, Gabriel is another angel in, uh, named in the Bible. Uh, he mentioned in Daniel uh, 8, 16, and uh, also, uh, you know, in the uh, chapter we just read in uh, Luke 1, um, he tells uh, uh, Zechariah, I'm Gabriel, who stand in presence of God. Okay, and uh, then we uh, also uh, read that uh, this angel Gabriel was sent to by God to a city of Galilee and named uh, um, 
to uh, tell uh, Virgin Mary uh, to name Jesus, uh, to name this baby Jesus, right? So um, these two angels, uh, they uh, have their names, uh, and we also probably have heard about, uh, I would say, the uh, Saturn or the uh, corrupt angel, Lucifer, right? Actually, Lucifer is not his name. Lucifer basically is a Hebrew translation of the uh, word like morning star, okay? Uh, we all know um, from the Bible that uh, Jesus, um, our Lord created the angels, and uh, this angel is a very powerful, was a very powerful angel in heaven, and we can see uh, that in the book of Job, okay, this uh, sudden work among other angels, um, but uh, as he, uh, he uh, got pride and wanted to be as the same as God, he was defeated, right? And when he, de when he was defeated, he uh, fell, and also uh, one third of other angels, those corrupt angels, fell with him. Okay, we can see that in the uh, book of Revelation. All right, so uh, the last thing I'm going to um, discuss is the uh, what angels do. Okay. <coughs> we know that the angels, they are servants. Okay, so they do all kind of, a lot of things. First of all, angels carry out some of God's plan. Okay. There are numerous ways in which God's, uh, I mean, the angels carry out uh, God's plan on earth. Uh, one of the most important things they do is uh, basically they are messengers. As a matter of fact, the word angel in Bible is a translation of the Hebrew malak or the Greek angelo, angelos, uh, which uh, both of them means uh, a messenger. So they carry out, um, you know, they um, proclaim God's the message, okay? And also they carry out some God's judgment, okay? For example, they bring a plague upon Israel, okay, in Samuel, um, uh, Second Samuel um, chapter 24, and also we'll know that in the um, Second Chronicles, right, the, when the Assyrian army surrounded uh, Jerusalem, um, the, um, actually the angel uh, killed 180,000 uh, soldiers in overnight. Okay, so this is what angel did. And uh, in the uh, actually Revelation, we, uh, we, all know, we all see that the angels are pouring out of the bowls of God's wrath on, wrath on earth. So they uh, uh, carry out and uh, they bring the uh, judgment on the earth. But the also, when Christ returns, he, uh, the angels will return with him as a greater army, right? And also, the uh, angels, they carry out wars uh, against the demonic force. Okay, so in the uh, book of Daniel, uh, those, uh, this angel, uh, Michael, they fight with the Persian, uh, this kind of uh, evil force. And uh, so they carry out uh, God's praying. They do what, God's ask, what God asks him to do. Okay. And the angels, of course, they uh, glorify God. Right. So um, in, the, uh, in the psalm, we all uh, see a lot of uh, verses that uh, uh, angels glorify God. For, for example, it's uh, hearkening to the voice of his word. So those uh, angels, they uh, just uh, praise uh, and uh, worship God. Also, um, angels, because they are the uh, cr creature, they are created, all right, so they are the uh, basically some, you know, s like us or we are like them in some extent because angels, they are created, we are created, and the, the angels, uh, they, are s they are in the spirit form, but we have the form of both body, flesh and the spirit, but the, the if we are look at those angels, actually angels, they set some example for us. For, for, for example, the angels shows us uh, what the perfect obedience looks like, right? So the, uh, you know, when Jesus taught us how to pray, what did he say? Your will be done on earth as in heaven. So the uh, Jesus, uh, the God's will is um, done in heaven without any uh, inheritance, right? So because the, uh, all the uh, uh, angels, they follow, uh, they uh, listen to, uh, to God, okay? They, um, they serve God faithfully and willingly, all right? So they are the uh, kind of example for us to serve God. And also they are the example of uh, worship. So when they are in the book of Revelation, when John sees around God's throne a great angelic army, right? 
they, uh, what did they do? They just uh, say with a loud voice, worthy is the name who was slain to, to receive power and uh, wealth and wisdom and might and our honor and glory and blessing. So angels find that, you know, um, it is very nature for them to worship God. So because they are created that, uh, that way. We humans, actually, we are created to do what? To enjoy our, to worship him, right, and uh, the uh, enjoy our God. So, so we are created to worship God. So uh, these angels um, set us an example how to worship our God. Where we worship our God with all our hearts and mind. Okay, so this is kind of, uh, you know, what angels are in the Bible. But because those an angels are very uh, kind of uh, powerful, and uh, the, uh, in the Old Testament, uh, Jewish um, Christians, they, they basically know what the angels has, uh, have done. All right? So some of them, okay, as uh, Paul pointed out, uh, thought that the angels is the mediator of between God and human. And uh, even like in other days, they believe that, you know, Jesus is an angel. All right. So in this book, um, in the following, the, like uh, um, four, uh, in the chapter one, okay, um, after the uh, authors claim that Jesus is God, right, um, and uh, then he uh, mentioned another important uh, issue that uh, uh, you know, those Jewish Christians they are facing is that, uh, you know, is Jesus superior to angel? Okay, so uh, here list the author listed uh, a lot of uh, actually one, two, three, four, uh, four uh, reasons. Okay, from the Old Testament, okay, to tell those uh, Jewish Christians that uh, Jesus is superior to angels. So we'll go through this. So first of all, you know the verse. Um, one, actually a uh, four, it says, having become as much superior to angel as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Okay, probably we are not really uh, care, well, I'm, I'm pretty sure we care a lot of, uh, about our names, but we really don't have any choices, right? Our, our parents choose the name for us, right? But then the name in the uh, in Bible is very, very important. Okay, Jesus' name, Jesus, which is the... Uh, Savior, right? And Emmanuel, uh, God is with his people. So those uh, names are very, very important. And we uh, look at the Old Testament and the, you know, those, um, you know, prophecies, okay? And, uh, you know, like the book of Hosea, the, uh, and the, uh, he gave his uh, children names, right? So basically those names reflect, you know, like uh, the, uh, the uh, God's will. But the, the uh, Jesus Christ has the name, okay, which is, uh, you know, beyond all the uh, names. In the uh, Philippians 2, uh, 9 and, and in the 11, um, uh, it says, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that the name of Jesus, every, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledges that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory God the Father. So our God gave Jesus the name above all names. Okay. So Jesus uh, is better than angel because his name, okay, he has a more excellent name than the angels. And then uh, the author moves on. Uh, he uh, uh, cited the Psalm. Two seven and actually and another uh, verse is Samuel um, Second Samuel seven and fourteen. Well, it says, uh, "For which of the angel did God ever say, you are my son? Today I have begotten you.' So this is in the uh, uh, Psalm two seven, and also, um, and all again I'll be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son, and again." When brings the firstborn of the uh, world, he says, uh, "Let all angels worship him." But in the um, uh, verses five and six, okay, uh, 
it is, tells us that Jesus is superior to the angels because he is the son of God. Um, although angels, they uh, many times be um, kind of uh, connectively be called the sons of God, okay, like in, uh, in the book of Job, but the, the uh, no angels is ever given a title individually. Okay. S especially these verses, today I have begotten you. Okay, God the Father also spoke to God the Son, and it described him as a begotten. Right? The word begotten speaks of the equality of the substance and the es essential nature between the Father and the Son. It means that the Father and the Son share the same being. Okay, the Father and the Son is the same. Okay? Uh, and the, for the second um, part, um, Samuel 7, 17, I... Um, I'll be to his father, uh, I'll be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. So this is uh, taken from the uh, second, second uh, Samuel. Uh, this is a Davidic covenant. Actually, there's a covenant uh, established between uh, our God and David, right? So this uh, sentence, uh, this sentence uh, reflects two things. Okay, it is a good example of the uh, Old uh, Testament prophecy that had two uh, fulfillment in mind. In a near and imperfect sense, okay, this promise uh, was uh, fulfilled in David's son Solomon. Okay, so but uh, we'll know that uh, Solomon sinned, and uh, then the uh, basically uh, the rest of the uh, kings they are uh, um, in the uh, kingdom of Israel or the kingdom of Judah they all um, astray, right? But uh, the uh, more distant and the fur um, pr more perfect sense is the fulfillment in the Son of David, Jesus Christ. Okay, so God stated very clearly, okay, Jesus Christ is my son. You know, we all remember that when Jesus got baptized by John Baptism, when he came out of the uh, water, uh, angels fell on him like uh, doves, and what did our God say? This is my son. I'm very pleased with him. Right? So God, angel, um, Jesus is superior to the angels because uh, Jesus, Jesus is God's son. And, you know, uh, Jesus is superior to angels because uh, uh, angels worship and serve Jesus, okay, who, is the, uh, who is their God. So this verse is taken from the uh, Deuteronomy 33, um, uh, verses 43, and also Psalm 104. Um, let me just read it to you. Uh, let six, and again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, "Let all God's angels worship him." Of the angel, he says, "He makes his angels winds, and his minister a flame of fire." So it is very clear that when God talk about the uh, Son, Jesus Christ, okay, angels worship the Son. Okay, the, uh, you know, we all know that, you know, uh, if I, uh, of course, I worship um, our God, but, uh, you know, um, if you are me, let me put it this way, okay? Uh, let's say uh, if you are uh, bow, okay? If you bow, you, uh, you're going to bow to the uh, superior, right? Your, uh, you know, your, uh, like your grandparents and probably the, uh, you know, the kings, right? The king is not going to bow to you, right? So, so when the uh, God, the author says here, okay, the uh, angels worship Jesus Christ. It means that Jesus Christ is superior to those angels, all right? And uh, uh, also, uh, like what we said previously, those angels are just uh, the uh, ministers, all right? They are the servants. So the, the, um, Jesus is superior to the angels because angels worship him. And uh, the, uh, also Jesus is superior to angels because the Father himself called him God and the Lord, uh, Yahweh. So in the, uh, Psalm 45, uh, 6 to 7, uh, plainly said that God the Father called the Son God. Okay, so it is uh, like here. Um, but of the Son, he says, this he is God. Uh, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wicked. Therefore, God, your God, has aligned you 
with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And the, and the new Lord laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. And they will perish, but you will re remain. They will wear like a garment, like a robe, you will roll them up. Like garment, they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will have no end. So here, the, uh, the God, the Father, calls the Son God. When the first person of the Trinity speaks to the second person of the Trinity, he called him, he called him dead, uh, God. This is a unique and a powerful evidence that the, uh, the deity of the Jesus. And also, uh, um, you know, the, um, the God, when God talked about the uh, Son, uh, the, the Father talked about the Son, he, uh, he says, Okay, in the beginning lay the foundation of the earth. It shows that Jesus Christ, the second person of the Trinity, is the creator. Okay, everything is created through him. Okay, we'll know in, the, uh, uh, in uh, John the Gospel, right? We'll know that uh, Jesus, everything is crea created through Jesus Christ. And also in the book of Hebrew, in the um, first uh, three uh, verses, we'll know that Jesus created the, the world. Okay, so here, um, the God, the Father specifically says to the uh, Creator, okay, said that Jesus is the uh, Creator. And the uh, uh, following, um, they will perish, but you will remain, okay. It shows that Jesus Christ, the second person of the Trinity, is self existence, okay. It's, uh, it's not created, okay. A he is the Creator, okay. Uh, so those angels are created, but Jesus Christ is the Creator. And also, like a cloak, you will fold them up, and they will be changed. It shows that Jesus Christ, the second person of the Trinity, is sovereign, right? It has the authority over all the creation and the history, right? It can fold everything, the earth, everything, the, the heavens, up like uh, the robe, right? So Jesus Christ has the authority over all the creation. And in the end, Jesus is the same, right? In the book of he Hebrew, later on, it says, Jesus uh, yesterday, today, and forever, he's the same, okay? So Jesus doesn't change. Who doesn't change? Who is existent in, who existent, exist in the beginning? Who doesn't have the end of the year? Who doesn't change? Our God, okay? So here, it uh, um, um, claims that Jesus Christ is the uh, is God, God. And in the end, in the Psalm um, 10, uh, 110 and one it says um, and the two which of angels he has ever said sit at my right hand till I make your enemies a footstool of your feet so if you um, let's say uh, if you uh, meet uh, K uh, Queen Elizabeth all right so uh, you just uh, uh, step um, Beside her, and then just grab a chair and sit beside her. You cannot do that, all right? So, angels, they are the servants, okay? They can't sit uh, beside, the, uh, beside the throne of God. Only Jesus can. Why Jesus can do that? Because Jesus is the God, all right? So, um, Jesus is the uh, superior to the angel because he sat down, and having completed his work, why the angels they has they have to work on continually, okay. so the Messiah the Messiah has this exalted place and the posture in heaven. Anyone who sits in the divine presence shows that uh, they have the perfect right to be there, okay. And there are no seats for angels, of course, and because they are they are constantly uh, busy praising God, serving God, but uh, Jesus can, okay, at the um, the, he can sit at the right hand of the God the Father. So lastly, I want to uh, share with you is the uh, last verse. Are they not uh, ministering spirit sending out to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation? So from all these, um, you know, comparison, we uh, know that uh, Jesus is superior to angels because Jesus has a more excellent name than angels. Uh, Jesus, uh, um, um, is superior to angels because angels worship Jesus. 
and Jesus is a superior to angels because the Father Himself called Him Lord and God, and He is the Creator of the uh, of the heavens and earth, and He remains the same because He is the God. And Jesus is superior to angels because He sat down uh, at the uh, right side of the uh, of the God, the Creator. So here we all know that Jesus is uh, superior to um, to angels, but uh, you know, uh, at last uh, verse, uh, the uh, the author specially mentioned that those angels are all ministering spirits and sent out to serve the, for the sake of those who are to inherit the salvation. So who are those who are to inherit the salvation? That's you and me. Right? So during our earthly life, we are lower than angels because we just read in the uh, in Psalm 8, right? Um, we have uh, made a little bit lower than angels, okay? but we are crowned with glory and honor. But as powerful as angels are, when Jesus returns, the follower of Christ, us, okay, will be raised higher than those, G, uh, than those angels. Because in the book of 1 Corinthians, it says, do you not know that we will judge angels? So how much more um, you know, glorious we are than the angels? But the, if we look at the... Uh, w- if we think about uh, why those Jewish Christians they uh, fell back, uh, go back to the Judaism, uh, because they uh, some of them they think that they can be justified, they can uh, follow Jesus, uh, follow the uh, God, they can be God's children just uh, through their traditions. Because in their traditions they see those kind of angels, they see Moses, they see Joshua, and then they s- uh, see those uh, high priests, so they can. S- uh, kind of have these impressions that if I practice all of this, if I follow angels, if I follow Jesus, uh, Moses, or follow Joshua, probably I have a way to, uh, to be with God. But j- here, it made it very clear that Jesus is the only way. Okay, we can only come to uh, God through Jesus. Jesus says no one can come to God, to Father, except through him. Okay, so there's, n- there's, I mean, the salvation is uh, just in Christ. And there's no other name on the earth given among men by which we can be saved. Right? Not even the angels. Okay? We cannot be saved by angels. We can only be saved by the uh, Christ. But if we think about it, okay, we are empowered by Christ. Okay? Although those angels, they are very powerful beings. But when Jesus returns, okay, when we, were ra- when we are raised up, we sit with Jesus Christ, and we are going to judge those angels. Okay? Probably you would think that, okay, uh, angels, they are more powerful than us. Sure, they, uh, they uh, appear like that. But in Christ, okay, we have the power from Christ. Okay? We have the power to live a victorious life because we... Don't rely on our tradition. You know, in Ch- uh, as Chinese, we have our also have our tradition that we can hang on. Say, hey, if we practice this, we probably can be with God. Okay, we are uh, in the old uh, in the culture. We are, uh, uh, you know, keep um, hearing like a Tian Yi, right? Human and heaven uh, united or in harmony, right? So, how to achieve this kind of human and uh, heaven in harmony? Okay, you do the a good work. Okay, you uh, do meditation, right? You uh, um, you exercise your wisdom, all right. So those are the old practice of the uh, culture. But you know, here it says those culture, those practice is not going to uh, help you uh, to be with God, to reconcile with God. Okay, we because of uh, our sins, we were away from God. We were enemies of God. So as uh, as we have learned in the uh, like uh, previously about the blessed are those peacemakers. Okay, Jesus Christ is the only mediator and is the only peacemaker between God and us. He died for us on the cross, and His blood is the seal on us that through Him we are God's children. Not through angels, not through Moses, not through Joshua. Not through your good work, not through your great, not through anything, but Jesus Christ. So I hope that you know, uh, may the God's uh, God Spirit 
help us to see Jesus Christ is superior to angels, is superior to anything that was created. He is the way, the truth, and the life to God. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you. Lord, through this um, passage, we are learning that Jesus is superior to angels. As a matter of fact, Jesus is the creator. Jesus is the God. Jesus is the way, is the truth, and is the life. Lord, help us to follow Jesus. Lord, we know that we are sinners. We cannot be justified by our own deeds. We cannot be justified by what we have done. Lord, but through you, Jesus Christ, who come to earth to die for us, the God died for us. In him, we are justified. In him, we can call our Father, our God, the Father. And in him, God is with us. And nobody can be against us. Lord, we thank you. We pray in our Lord Jesus Christ's name. Amen.